Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Mosha Satya. I am an assistant professor in Aditya Silverok Institute of Technology, Silverok University. I am going to talk about matrices, which is in a topic of semester 1. Today, I am going to cover row at length form and reduced row at length form of a matrix. So, let's start with the row at length form of a matrix. In short, we write it as an R and F. So, matrix A is said to be in a row at length form if it satisfies the following properties. The first one is every zero row of a matrix A upper D of an opposite row. That means if we have any zero row in a matrix A, it should be in the last row. The second one. The first non-zero number from the left of a non-zero row is 1. This is called a leading one. Means there is a zero non-zero row in matrix and the first non-zero number from that row should be 1. Afterward, there is no any reference to non-zero number. It could be 0, 1, minus any number. Then the third. For each non-zero row, a leading one Now let's see the example of row at length form. We have three examples which represent the row at length form. First one is 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And the last one is 0, 0, 0. Now here you can see the first property, first condition satisfies that the 0 row should be in the last row. Now the non zero row should have a leading one. Means the first non zero number, uh, number should be 1. So from here you can see this is the non zero row, first row is the first non zero element is 1. Same way in the second row, this is non zero row and the first non zero number is 1. And the last one as I told you is the 0. Now moving to the second example, it is also in the row at length form. Now let's see does it have a zero row? Uh, let's skip the first condition and coming to the second condition, every non zero row should be uh, should have a leading one. So, all of three are non zero rows, and first one has uh, leading one over here, second one has leading over, over here, and the third one has a leading one over here. We also satisfy the condition G. So, that's why it is in the inner. Similarly, let's see the second, third example. All three rows are non-zero rows. Each and every row have leading one. The first non-zero number is one. And, and in the first row, I have a leading one in the second column. So, I cannot have any leading one in the first column. Now, in the second row, it is in the and it is in the third row, it is in the last column. So, row opposite form. So, next one is the reduced row at length form of a matrix. In a short, we write it as a RREF. A matrix A is said to be in a reduced row at length form if each column that contains a leading one in a row at length form of a matrix A has zeros everywhere else in that column. That means for a reduced row at length form, we want our matrix in a row at length form. Okay. After that, each and every 
non zero row has a leading one now let's see in a le that leading one appears in a any column that column should not have any other entries rather than that leading one so at that column should have zeros everywhere else other than leading one so here are the example of reduced row echelon form first one is a zero matrix it is in a reduced row echelon form the second one identity matrix of order 3 it is also in a reduced row echelon form we mind that uh, every identity matrix in a reduced row echelon form because uh, in that matrix every row is a uh, non zero row and uh, every row has a leading one also and in uh, leading one uh, whatever the leading one uh, are in a close that leading one the column of that leading one uh, has only zeros other than that so jump to jump into the third uh, example we here have all three rows as a non zero rows each has leading one now let's see the first rows leading one it is in a first column so you can see there is only zeros rather than that leading one same conditions apply for the second row and that leading was in a second column so other entries of that column is zero same way the third leading row and there is no restriction in the last column that's why the number are as it is it makes this matrix in a reduced row echelon form now the fourth example we have two uh, zero rows and the both rows are in the bottom okay the first two rows are non zero rows now each and every rows have a leading one now you can see there is no leading one in a first column so every entry in a column one is zero in a second column we have leading one in a first row so other three are zero there is no leading one in a third row so we have no restriction into that and in a last column we have leading one in a second column sorry second row so other than uh, there is zeros in all over the column this makes this four example in a reduced row echelon form. Now let's see the examples of reduced row echelon form and row echelon form to enhance our knowledge. So for that, verify whether the matrix in a row echelon form, reduced row echelon form, both or neither. So here is our first example. This is the matrix which we need to verify whether it is in a row echelon form, reduced row echelon form, both or no, no one. So let's start with the first condition of row echelon form that is of the zero row. This matrix has a zero row and this row is in the last. So it satisfies the first condition. Now other three rows are a non-zero rows. So we need to verify whether they have a leading one or not. So, the first row has a leading one, the second row also has a leading one and the third row is also having a leading one. So, the second condition also satisfied. Now, you can see the third condition is also satisfied. There is, there is no uh, leading one in a preceding rows. So, it is in a row echelon form. Now, to check whether it is in a uh, reduced row echelon form or not, we need to only focus on a leading one. So, in a first leading one, we need to have all the zeros other than that, that in that column. And there is all zero present there. So, it is in a row, uh, it is, it satisfies. Now, the second leading row, leading one is in a third column, which also satisfies the condition. And the last leading one, which is in a last column, also satisfies the condition that all the elements of that column except the leading one is zero. So it is also in a reduced row echelon form. 
Moving to the second example, here is the matrix. Now let's see whether it is in a reduced row echelon form, row echelon form, both or none. For that, let's check whether this matrix has zero row or not. This has no zero rows. So we need not to cons uh, we should not consider the first condition. Now about the leading row, the leading one. The first row is a leading one, yes. The second one has leading one too and third also having leading one. But you can see the third condition is not satisfied from this that the first leading one is okay but the second row's leading one is in a third column and apparently third row has a leading one in a second column which violates the condition of uh, third one so that's why it is not in a reduced sorry in, in a row echelon form now if it is not in a row echelon form it makes that it is not in a reduced row echelon form because in a reduced row echelon form there is a condition that the matrix should be in a uh, row echelon form and that's why this example is neither in a row echelon form nor reduced row echelon Example number three. Here is the matrix. Now let's see whether this is in a row echelon form, reduced row echelon form, both or none. This has no zero rows, so both the rows are in a non-zero rows. First one has a leading one, and second one also having a leading one. It also satisfies the condition three. That's why it is in a row echelon form. Now to check. Whether it is in a reduced row echelon form, we need to focus on a leading one. The first leading one is in the first column and other entry of this uh, column are zero. And that's why it satisfies the first condition. Now for the second leading one, it is in a second row. But there is one entry minus six, which is not zero. And that's why this not satisfy the condition of reduced row echelon form and hence it is not in a reduced row echelon form. Now for the fourth example, we have this example. Uh, let's focus on a zero row. Does it have a zero row? Yes, it is having two zero rows. But you can see the first row itself is a zero row which violates the first condition and that's why this example is not in a row echelon form. Now it is not in a row echelon form that's why it is not also in a reduced row echelon form. So it is neither in row echelon form nor reduced row echelon form. Now let's find out the row echelon form and reduced row echelon form of the following matrices. Means we can find row echelon form and reduced row echelon form of any matrix. So for this, we need to perform the row operation. So let's recall the row operation. There were three row operations. First one was we can interchange any two row. Second, we can multiply any row with non-zero constant. And the third one, we can multiply any row with the non-zero constant and we can add that multiplied row into other row and we can also uh, subtract them too. So using these three operations, we can find row echelon form and reduce row echelon form of any matrix. So let's start with the example one. Here is the matrix and the rows of this matrix are one, two, three. 4, 6, 8 and 3, 4, 5. Now for row echelon form, uh, we need leading rows in each and every non-zero rows. So the first row, we need to have a leading one. But you can see we have already leading one as the first non-zero element of that row is one. Now to satisfy other conditions, we need... Uh, 4 and 3 as a 0 because the elements below leading 1 should be 0. So making this 4 and 3 0, we need to apply two operations that 
first operation is we need to multiply first row with the minus 4 and adding to the second row and in the second operation we need to multiply first row with the minus 3 and add to the third row. So here are the operations. After applying this operation to the matrix we have this matrix. Let's see how it forms. Multiply first row with the minus 4, we have minus 4, minus 8 and minus 12. Adding this to the second row, we will have 0, minus 2, minus 4. Similar way, for the second operation, which will change the third row, we need to apply first row with the minus 3, which gives minus 3, minus 6 and minus 9. Adding to the third row, we will have 0, minus 2, minus 4. So here is the matrix after these three, uh, after these two operations. Now for the next operation, we need a leading one over here. So let's multiply second and third rows with the minus one by two. So after multiplying minus one by two to the both second and third row, we'll have the matrix one, two, three, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. You can see we have both the rows same means the second and third row are same. So let's subtract the first the third row from the second one. So we'll have the resultant matrix as 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2 and 0, 0, 2. So you can see I have minus I have applied operation R3 minus R2 and that's why I have the zero row at the bottom. If I multiply, if I make an operation R2 minus R3, this zero row would be in the place of second row. So we'll need to interchange that. So doing with the smart work, I have I have subtracted second row from the third row, and that's why the matrix is in a row equivalent form. Now to making this matrix in a reduced row equivalent form, I will have to have zeros in which column there is a leading one is present. So for the row equivalent form, I have multiplying the R1 with the minus 2 to make this 2 as a 0 1. And the resultant 1 is 1 0 minus 1. 0, 1, 2 and 0, 0, 0. Now let's check whether it is in a reduced row Eklund form. We need to focus on leading one. Here are the leading ones. There is other elements 0 except this linear one in a both column. That's why the matrix is in a reduced row Eklund form. Now moving to the example 2. Here is the matrix of order 4. Now we need leading 1 in the first row, first column. You can see there is 1 in a row 3 which is also in a column 1. That's why we can interchange row 1 and row 3. After interchanging row 1 and 3, we have resultant matrix like this. Now this makes this one as the leading one. So Let's make this 3 means this 2, 2 and 3 in a 0 form. For this, we need to have operations R2 minus 2 R1 and R4 minus 3 R1. After applying this operation in this matrix, we have this resultant matrix. This is 1, 3, minus 1, 2, 0, minus 3, 6, 1. The third row will remain same that is 0, minus 1, 2, 3 and the last row will be 0, minus 7, 7, 5. Now we need leading 1 over here. For this either I can multiply second row with the one minus 1 by 3 or I can interchange second and third row and after interchanging I can multiply second row with the minus 1. So I will go with the second option. I will interchange second and third row. After interchanging, I will have this resultant matrix. So 
Now let's multiply the second row with the minus 1 and the resultant matrix will be this. Now this makes this one as a leading one for the second row. So for the row echelon form, we need these two elements as a zero. For making this two elements zero, we need these two operations that is R3 plus 3R2, R4 plus 7R2. This makes this matrix. So the two rows change that is the third row and fourth rows are 0, 0, 0, minus 8, 0, 0, minus 7, minus 26. Now we want leading one over here but you can see if I make a leading one in this fourth row it will be in a third column which will violate the third condition of the row echelon form that's why first we need to interchange third and fourth row which makes the element uh, matrix like this. Now again let's multiply third row with the minus one by seven and simultaneously, we can make leading 1 in a 4th row by multiplying minus 1 by 8. After this, we have the resultant matrix in which the 3rd and 4th rows are 0, 0, 1, 26 by 7 and the 4th one will be 0, 0, 0, 1. So, above matrix in a row echelon form. Now to make this matrix in a reduced row echelon form, I will focus on the last leading one. And for that, I need operations. R3 minus 26 by 7 R4, R2 plus 3 R4, R1 minus 2 R4. With the resultant matrix will be 1, 3, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, minus 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now you can see for the last column we have a leading 1 in the last row and above that all the elements are 0. Now focusing on the leading 1 which is in the third row we need to make this minus 2 and minus 1 0. For that we need operations R2 plus 2 R3, R1 plus 3 R3 and the resultant matrix will be this which makes 1, 3, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, the only one element left, that is 3, which need to be 0, for that we will have the operation R3 minus 3 R2. So, here is the resultant matrix, which is the identity matrix of order 4, which is in a reduced row at one form. So, in today's lecture, we have seen detail of row echelon form and reduced row echelon form. Also, recall the three operations, row operations will help to make any matrix in row echelon form and reduced row echelon form. So, for today, thank you.